welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and this is the 20C Chevrolet Impala Taxi in the matchbox range between 1965 and 1969. This model has been violently repainted to what I assume to be a police car or at least a vague representation. It looks as though it has been painted in blue in the past as well. I get the feeling the previous owner wasn't keen on it being a taxi. I know the late Impalas were commonly used as taxis, but I'm not so sure about this generation. Then again, my knowledge of American automobilia is far from good. Loads of paint to be stripped here, including the wheels. I've also got another rough and ready Impala that I will spruce up as a restoration plus, simply by applying some more chrome detailing and painting in the tail lights that were never painted during production. The windscreen I've had to source a reproduction, and of course these models had taxi transfers on the hood. The windscreen was in fairly good nick aside from a hole in front of the driver. Here's a look at the Impala from the same generation, albeit a sport coupe two door instead of a four door. So I begin removing the rivet edge front and rear. I then remove the rivet holding in the windscreen with my modified shallow drill bit. After drilling out the post, I remove the wheels from the base and then I have all of my component parts to spread out. I then thread the posts with an M2 screw tap. And now the metal parts, including the base covered in paint, are ready for stripping. The Chevrolet Impala has been in production sporadically since 1957, with brakes in manufacture between 1985 to 1994 and 96 to 99. Named after the African Antelope, the Impala took design cues from the Corvette. The first generation had distinctive triple tail lights. For the 1959 model year, GM increased the Impala wheelbase and gave it outward protruding tail fins, losing the triple tail lights in favour of a teardrop shape. However, for 1960, the triple tail lights made a return. Over 180,000 first generation Impalas were made, and the second gen saw production figures rise to 490,000. While I was polishing up the base, I noticed there was a small split in the base on the bumper next to where the tow hook peeks through. The split was also visible on the inside. This I fixed with a touch of model filler and later sanded it back. Once sanded it smoothed off and I will conceal this with my chrome pen. The paint spec tyres are dropped into a cup of Dettol to loosen the paint. With production beginning in 1960 for the 1961 to 1964 model years, the new Impala third generation featured a more trim and squared off body style compared to its predecessors. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this casting is based on the 1964 model year. It features the aluminium strip above the tail lights, while the lights were also surrounded by a body coloured panel. The car was the feature of the Beach Boys 1962 hit 409, 409 being a reference to the size of the big block V8 engine. After priming, I go back to the wheels and scrape off the loose paint. Also, as a bit of an experiment, I cleaned up the only slightly damaged windscreen. Maybe one day I'll come back to it and try and repair it. Next up is the polishing of the base. After covering the base in Autosol, I use my rotary tool and buffing pad to polish it and return it to its natural shine. The Impala was redesigned for the 1965 model year, with the car becoming boxier, especially as it entered the fifth generation in 1971. The range continued to be Chevrolet's best seller, with the fourth gen setting record annual sales in the States for more than 1 million units sold. Here I apply the first layer of paint. This is Tamiya's TS34 Camel Yellow that, once dried, should look similar to the model's original orangey yellow hue. Then I get on with cleaning the plastic parts while the paint dries. A changing market meant the Impala was downsized for 1977, with the cars now shorter, taller and narrower than before. Good sales figures continued into the 80s, with the Impala now reduced to base level, 
while the similar Caprice continued unchanged as the upmarket version until 1990. The Impala as such became a popular fleet choice, often seen as police vehicles and taxis. In 1985, the Caprice badge took over even the base model Impala, and the Impala name wouldn't see a return until 1994. With the wheels washed and citadeled, I hammered them on the axles onto the base. Then I'll use my trusty Molotow chrome paint pen to spruce up the axle ends and go over the polished base, particularly where the model filler had been used. I don't often paint over the exposed metal with chrome, but I thought it necessary having used a filler at the back. It's still very effective. Direct application from the pen seems to give a nice smooth finish, unlike brushing on. The Impala SS returned the name to the Chevrolet range for a two year stint in 1994. It was a high performance version of the Caprice using a 5.7 litre Corvette engine. After shifting almost 70,000 units, the name was discontinued along with GM's entire B platform in late 1996. But the name made a return once more in 1999 with the eighth generation. Since then, it has been a front wheel drive layout but at the time of recording, it looks like the Impala name will once again be discontinued, with production plants idling in early 2020. Here I am applying the replacement taxi transfers. You also saw a moment ago me highlighting the door handles and badge, which wasn't standard, but I am doing this for my Restoration Plus model. The Resto Plus will also have all basic components, including the transfer to be applied. I spend plenty of time drying and smoothing out the transfer with a cotton bud. Then I apply some Mr. Mark Softer setting solution. So here are my component parts for the restored model. First up, I put the suspension piece back into the slot in the bottom of the interior. With that in place, I can fit my reproduction polished windscreen into the roof and push it over that almost flat rivet end. It clicks in place with a firm push. Then the interior and suspension are positioned, slotting the rear tab over the back rivet post. And then the base can be aligned with the rivet posts. Each end is firmly pushed down until it clicks into position. I can then line up my colour coded flathead screws and screw it all back together. So here's what we started off with. A repainted black and white cop car wannabe, although that original yellow is peeping through the cracks in the black. I needed to replace that windscreen due to the hole in front of the driver and get rid of all that paint from the plastics as well as the body. On top of sourcing a new windscreen, I needed replacement transfers too to make this a taxi once again. So here is what it looks like now. Back in an original shade of yellow, this taxi cab is looking so much fresher. The chrome front end really grabs your attention on the turntable, and the other metalwork equally stands out, including the axle ends. On the rear bumper, you'll barely be able to tell where the split was in the metalwork around the tow hook. The reproduction window unit pops after a dunk in the wood floor polish, and that taxi decal really suits, looking just like the original. I'm sure the driver is much happier with a solid lump of glass in front of him instead of a gaping hole. Check out my Resto Plus at the end of the video as well. I've added a few additional touches there. So that's all from me. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,